Welcome to Psalm 61. And uh, this is a, a beautiful little psalm. And I just want to walk through the whole thing. I don't tend to do that in these videos, but I just want to walk through the whole thing and feel the progression of the psalm as a whole. We'll note a couple of things as we go, but I think the progression here is a progression that we can benefit from as well. Here's how it begins. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Okay, so we've got that initial cry. I've got a problem. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. Selah. Think about that. So here the, the psalm writer is, is crying out to God and recognising that it's in God's presence, in God's company, in God's security that he can feel safe. Now notice the language that's being used here. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You have been my refuge. You have been a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent. Now, just a side comment from me. Tents don't feel like places you want to dwell very long at all. They feel like uncomfortable temporary abodes when you have to stay in a field for the night. But that's not the tone here, is it? Let me dwell in your tent forever. It's got that permanent sense to it. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. So all of this language speaking of safety and security to be found only in God. Then we come to the second half of the psalm. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Notice the past tense here. What God has done, you have given, you have heard. So based on what God has done, what does he say next? Well, then he starts to pray. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations looking forward may he be enthroned forever before god appoint steadfast love can't miss noticing that and what comes with it and faithfulness to watch over him so will i ever sing praises to your name as i perform my vows day after day so all this future stuff comes at the end so it's really kind of a simple progression but it's a good one I'm in a difficult situation. I cry out to the God because he's the only one that can make me feel safe, the only one that can offer me genuine security. I look back to what God has done for me and therefore I can pray with confidence moving forwards into the future. Now our context is different than the psalm writer here and we're probably not going to spend too much time praying for the length of the life of the king of Israel. Our context is different but this psalm, I think, resonates. In difficult times, we come to God and recognise that he's the only one that can provide safety and security for us. We look back at what he's done for us. And with that, we are able to confidently pray for the future, looking forward uh, with hope rather than fear and panic. Why? Because of God's steadfast love and faithfulness, which we mentioned along the way. Take a look at Psalm 61 and maybe... Maybe you want to rewrite it, rewrite it from where you're sitting or where you're standing right now, the fears that you feel. Remind yourself that your security comes from God. Remind yourself of what he has done for you. And then you can pray with confidence as you face the future, no matter how difficult it may look, the confidence that comes from who God is and what God has done. Psalm 61 I encourage you to read it, to share it with others, maybe to rewrite it in your own terms. We'll see you next time for the next psalm.